All right, guys, back to work. I know party's over, party's over. Close out the emails, get out of those chat rooms. Time to pay attention. We got Friday right around the corner here. It's Thursday evening after all. It is February 25th, 2021. My name is Joseph, in case you forgot from earlier on this week. And as always, welcome back to your nightly newsletter. Now, if you're here for the first time tonight, it's great to have you with me because my job tonight is to get us ready to capitalize to find the best trades on Friday's trading session. I got a jam-packed video in store for you guys and gals tonight. Charts are all prepped up in the background, as you can see. Got the E-mini, got the NASDAQ, and got the gold on our radar for tomorrow. Boy, speaking of tomorrow, end of the week, end of the month, got some big news early to kickstart uh, tomorrow's finally Friday trading session. And, then, you know, and, and in, in case you weren't paying attention today, we had some pretty big moves on the charts today, right? Big moves down pretty much across the board on pretty much all asset classes here today. And I'll tell you, whenever we see a big big move in one direction like we saw today across the board there's always two specific situations or setups we're looking for the following day so i want to make sure you guys are ready to capitalize on those two important kind of scenarios we expect for friday's trading session but before we jump in though and get these trades prepped up for tomorrow i just want to make sure to remind you make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel here you know we publish this video newsletter every evening with our best trade ideas for the following day so I don't want you to miss our next video newsletter. So make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And when you do, hit that little bell icon so you always get notified every time I publish something new. And don't forget, if you have any questions, you can always drop those questions for me in the comment section. I'd love to answer all your questions. So don't be afraid to type those questions in. I'll get them answered later on this evening. And you know, guys, I appreciate you guys tuning in every evening, carving out some time with me on this video. If you enjoy this video newsletter as much as I enjoy making it, do me a big favor here make sure you subscribe hit that hit that like button here for me that thumbs up button here on the video but enough of the introduction don't forget to subscribe let's get after the charts here this evening friday morning is right around the corner what do we have here on the charts tonight well again as i mentioned in the introduction we've got kind of a bloodbath right scenario today right all three of these markets got the e-mini three legs down nasdaq three legs down gold uh, a million legs down right gold pretty much three legs down big moves down right you'll notice here we got some ranges we're tracking a lot of similarities across these charts and I can see a lot of them look very similar and you know anytime anytime I anytime I see a move this big in one day there's two scenarios right we look for the following day and it is a range or a reversal. Ranges or reversals are very likely for tomorrow. Now, reversals may not fully complete. So we're gonna talk about tonight how we may get a potential reversal, but we may not actually get that. But typically though, big move down like this today, expect a range or reversal, right, for tomorrow. Now, of course, on the E-mini, I've got my range forming here, right? I would love to sell pops on the E-mini tomorrow, right up around that 38.60, 38.70. In the middle here on the NASDAQ, I've got a, a pretty good feeling for a range there. I love to sell short around that 13,000 on the NASDAQ tomorrow. And of course, over in the gold, same thing, at a range right in the middle. Got a beautiful expanding triangle on the gold right now. Got a bunch of key levels overhead. Would love to short those pops on pretty much on all these markets, right? S&P, NASDAQ, and of course, the gold now. With those pops, the market may reverse, right? So reversals back to the weekend gap, reversals back to the weekend gap, reversals maybe back up to some big round numbers and then possibly breakouts. The problem we have though is, is as we try to go lower, we're sitting on a lot of major support right now, which is great to pick some bottoms, right? Picking reversals off the low, reversals off the low, reversals off the low. So there's quite a bit of really nice setups we're tracking again, ranges and reversals uh, for tomorrow. Now, before we jump in and actually get the charts all prepping up here tonight, let's just make sure now you guys kind of know what we're expecting for tomorrow. Let's don't forget tomorrow's a Friday morning, the 26th day of February. Now, I know this seems like it's early in the month right now, but it's it's not. We're actually at the end of the month. There's only 28 days in the month of February. And of course, uh, tomorrow is the last trading day of the month of February. Now, 
Now, Friday mornings, Fridays are always early in, early out. So you really want to try to make your money on a Friday, that first half of the day, right? You got to have a good reason to be trading on a Friday after 11 o'clock Eastern time. So, you know, tomorrow morning, uh, you know, like we always say, get there early, make that money and get out of there early because as the day gets older on a Friday, things start getting less reliable, right? If you want more consistent results in your trading, right, you want to trade during the most reliable times of the day. Friday afternoon, you know, afternoon time on Friday is not the most reliable time to be trading. So get there early, get out of there early, make your money and get out, right? Keep that money and save your bullets for next week. So don't be forcing trades late on a Friday. We also know tomorrow is the end or the last trading day of the month. And what that typically means is, is desperation, right? Scarcity. Uh, if you're if you're working for a big trading firm or you're managing other people's money. If you haven't hit your numbers yet this month, you're going to see desperation trades, scarcity trades, right? It's not a lot of time left to make those numbers look good for the for the second month of the year. So traders will be forcing trades tomorrow. They will be kicking up the volatility. So shorter window, right? Smaller window for tomorrow and expect increased volatility as we go into the last trading day of the week and the last trading day of the month, right? People start to make desperate trading decisions as we go into the end of the month and the end of the week that will sort of show up the later we get tomorrow, right? Now, as far as the major news goes for tomorrow, there's really only two news reports to worry about tomorrow. The big news, though, is the personal income and the outlays, also known as the PCE deflator, right? The personal income number and outlays, that 830 number, that's the big news report tomorrow, right? It's a good to have that early in the session tomorrow because, as I mentioned earlier, we want to we wanna get this mark, these markets moving early tomorrow and, of course, uh, you know, again, make our money and then get out of there early so we don't get caught up, right, in kind of that Friday traffic jam late in the day on Friday. So early in, early out, don't be surprised if we see more, a little bit of uptick in volatility, and that big news tomorrow is at 8.30 Eastern time, all right? You get to, get, to, get to lay the land tomorrow. Don't push it too hard late in the day on a Friday. We know we got the calendar all prepped up. Charts are all ready. Let's dive right in here this evening. I'm going to start first on the S&P, all the way over on the left-hand side. The S&P, like a lot of these markets, made big, 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 big three-leg moves down. Uh, we began the morning. Right? This this morning, they had one, two, three legs down, and it, and it honestly looked like they were done with it as it went back to that weekend gap, right, at 3,900. But apparently, that was just the appetizer, right? That was just the appetizer. Oftentimes, legs come in threes. You can combine those three legs together, and you'll notice here we get one, two, three more legs down, right? That completes leg number two and you know normally when you see a big move like that you're expecting to see that pop up those buyers fail and retest that low and they complete their pretty much their triple measured move going lower one two and now three now whenever I see a market go three big legs in one session usually again it's usually it's not going much further but obviously there's always an exception to every rule right welcome to the markets welcome to life right right when you think you know exactly what's going on they're going to throw you a curveball so it's not to say this market can't keep going lower because it definitely can keep going lower all it wants to tomorrow but typically when we see markets go these big three legs down we're expecting to see right some sort of trading range or a reversal the most important thing is is you've got to look at this as in the perspective of somebody coming into the market for the first time tomorrow they're going to look at this big move down and if they're smart they're going to think boy I don't want to sell way down here, right? I don't want to sell at the lowest possible price. I'd much rather sell. If I could get this thing to come off these lows, I would definitely I would definitely consider selling at a higher price. So we oftentimes are going to see that nice, big, big, deep pullback. And because of that, we want to be ready for those shorts right up around those highs. So, you know, really at this point, the, the key is we want to be ready for both of these scenarios, either a reversal or a trading range. Now, the first thing is we want to try to sell this market as it's popping up, right? I want to sell it as it goes higher. 
where 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 the challenge comes in is that we can kind of see there's a range forming right here on the on the e-mini. The challenge we have is if the market runs higher, that means we have what's called rotation right off the low. And in kind of layman's terms, what that means is a hell of a lot of momentum right for the bulls. So when the market pokes its head back higher here and I want to be a seller up around these highs, Right, and this, of course, is whether it's a range or just a pullback right now. I have to anticipate we're going to probably see a lot of buyers trying to run this thing back up, right, to that weekend gap at 3,900. That round number, that's a big round. Remember, that's last Friday's close. So there's a decent chance we finish the day tomorrow up around that 3,900. So again. A reversal is is likely here, right, in this situation, but I'm not going to try to predict that reversal. Bottom line is, if we get that one, right, if we if we get that run back up off the low here, if I can get up into some of these key levels of resistance, I know I have a lot of momentum now that's going to kind of swing back for the bulls. On top of that, there's going to be a lot of buyers here who are going to try to pick the bottom of this market, and so my job tomorrow is going to be to give the you know to to, to give those buyers the benefit of the doubt expect them to try to come in and i'm going to give them two tries i'll give them one try for the bulls i'll give them two try for the bulls i'm going to try to mark up those lows bring up around those highs and find that short back down this is a variation of what i call a failure setup right a failure setup now the ideal is i want to get up inside these highs right and then look for those buyers to try a couple times knowing they're trying to cure this thing back up and then look for areas of resistance to short this thing back down again they're called failure patterns we talk about this stuff quite a bit in our trade room every day now another thing to keep in mind too is i've got this channel drawn on right off of that off that low off of that high that channel is going to be a, a, a level of resistance right it will the only problem with that level of resistance is it doesn't really give me a good amount of profit potential uh, as I try to go back into that range in other words uh, I like the idea of selling up here right because I can risk small to earn large but if all we get is a relatively shallow pullback now my yeah see now my risk reward ratio right isn't it's just not that great right it's just not that great so whenever I'm concerned about my risk reward Whenever I'm concerned about selling too low, I want to start looking for trap entries. And so trap entries are, 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 pr are pretty simple. What you want to do is you just simply don't want to take the failure pattern. You want to look for a trap setup above a prior swing, right? Traps are great setups. Again, whenever you've got momentum on your side, there's no doubt about direction here. I'd love to incorporate the high of that channel. My, my concern, though, is, is on, on a day like today, you know, we get these big moves down like this. I just, I'm not really in the mood to be selling very low right now because we had such a big move down. So I'd like to get that big pop off the, off the low, but if we don't, I will gladly settle for that trap entry, okay? So as the market goes higher, it's either a deep pullback into a failure, one, two, again, mark that high, mark, sorry, mark that low, mark that high, and look for that short, or it's gonna be that up shallow pullback, one, two, that trap and back down. Now you're probably wondering, how does a reversal work on this? Well, reversals are very, very easy to spot, but you don't wanna try to predict them, right? That's one of the hard parts about reversals. They're very difficult to predict. What I wanna see is, I wanna see a strong move higher, right? Probably profit taking for these bears. I wanna see the pullback to the moving average, and then the buyers have to hold it, right? The buyers have to hold that pullback and jump off the EMA. That creates that one, two, three reversal, and now I can mark up that high, I can mark up that low, and I can get long buying off the low of that channel. Now, just a heads up on that, this, this pullback is usually gonna be kind of a combination of what I call a failure pattern into a pullback pattern into a trap pattern going higher, right? So there, you know, I'm not gonna go into, into too much detail on that, but failure patterns, pullback patterns and then trap patterns are great in that sequence right as they come off the low of that channel all right so one two three reversal into hidden channel pullback and again around that low seller failures 
bullish pullbacks, right? And and what are what are trap lows or or bear traps on the way up to hitting that weekend gap, hitting that big round number, and maybe, right? Maybe doesn't look likely, but maybe all the way back up to that 39, 34. That'd be a pretty tall glass of water. All right, guys? So keep your eyes open, right, on that reversal. Now, as we go lower, my biggest problem going lower is we've got a triple measured move down here. And if you look left, there's this big bottom, right? That 38.04 and three quarters. That's a, that's a pretty obvious bottom there, right? Now, the good news is if they can crack through that bottom, look at all the open space now we have. I mean, literally, it's all the way down to 56 before we really start to look at a big, a big level down there. All of these levels below us are pretty much matchstick levels, right? They're very thin. You know, they're prior swing lows. They're they're just they're just not tremendously strong areas of support. So I'll tell you right now, if they can crack and hold below, you know, this 3804 area, there there could be a very significant vacuum effect here that takes us lower pretty quickly. Again, the next low we have on like a four hour chart is down at 36. 56. It's incredible how big that move down is. Lot of open space as we go. Now, again, here's the problem though, right? We've got a big move down today. So there better be something new information coming out, right? That news report tomorrow better be horrible, right? That the Fed will have to come in and probably say, "Now nah, we change our mind. We're not going to we're not going to keep rates low, right?" They'd have to, you know, call off the stimulus, you know what I mean? Like that would probably be what we'd have to get tomorrow to get another big bloodbath move like that. Again, is it possible? Anything's possible. Is it probable the day after a big move like this there there needs to be something that floods the market with a ton of fear, right, to get this to keep going lower tomorrow. So, you know, knowing that, I don't want to try to buy, I don't want to try to sell the breakout. What I'd love to do is, is buy the failure, right? Buy the failure. Like I said, reversals are very common on big moves like this. So as the market goes lower, I'm going to take out the big guns and I'm going to grab my crown reversal pattern, right? Now, it's a bear market, so I've got to give the bears the benefit of the doubt. If I can take out these lows, I'd like to see the bears try once to take it lower, try twice to take it lower, right? And then trap low and buy back up. Now, oftentimes what will happen is, is you'll get that trap low, the market will rip higher. You can then grab a channel top, channel bottom, and then grab that pullback, right? On the way over, right? So crown reversal into, you know, again, uh, Pull, it's 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 a pullback in this in this example, but again, it would be a right. It's going to be a a failure into pullback into trap right combination as we come off of that of that channel. Now, oh, and by the way, too, you know, I cover all of these these patterns, right? These failures, these pullbacks, these traps. You know, I go into a lot more detail of those in our free trading course. I'll put a little button there that pops up there in the upper right-hand corner. You know, I, I can't go into all the small details, but you got to check out the free course. You got to learn those patterns because the patterns are how you actually get into these trades, right? And I'll send you a lot of examples as part of the free course about how we use this, right, every day in our trade room and how we apply those setups to our favorite futures market. So definitely grab that free course if you're serious about your trading and you want to really master the entry techniques that we use in our trade room. Uh, you definitely check out that free course that popped up there in the upper right hand corner so again as we go lower it's that one two crown reversal pop up right into that hidden channel and then again failure right into pullback into trap right as we go higher now where do we think the target would be up here it's definitely up around those big highs and because it's a short covering rally, right, because it's a short squeeze, it could really start to rip, right, take out that, you know, possibly all the way back to that weekend gap. That seems pretty reasonable if they can get off that low. Now, as we go lower here, right, what's the plan if it takes off and runs? If it takes off and runs, I can't just sell the breakdown. I'm going to have to wait for them to go right? Give me some momentum going lower and then hold that pullback, right? Hold that pullback. If they can hold that pullback here for me, right? If they can, if they can hold that pullback here for me, now that creates that one, two, three breakout. And now I know the bears for whatever reason, they want more. I'm going to mark up that low. 
what I'll probably do in this situation is mark up that big high, right? Find that larger channel and then look for that again, failure, pullback, trap, right? Combination. I, I know I'm drawing squiggly lines right now, right? Because unfortunately, I can't go into all the details here in this video. But again, I cover those, I cover those entry setups, these specific entry setups. A lot more examples of those are included, right, in the free course that I mentioned earlier. All right? Last but not least, you're right. So now you know as we go lower, now you know kind of the one, two, three move, right? Mark that low, mark that high, hit that high, right? First test is always the best test, right? Okay, what if we go sideways here? If the market gets stuck sideways, not a lot changes, all right? Not a lot changes. I'm still looking for that shallow pullback trap. I'm looking for that deep pullback failure, right? I'm looking for that crown reverse, right? Nothing, really, really nothing changes. If the market goes sideways, the one thing you remember is, is stay out of the middle, right? Stay out of the middle. If we go sideways here, just stay the heck out of the middle, wait for the pop, wait for the drop, and trade the plan accordingly, all right? And again, uh, uh, again, got to grab those free, that free course linked up in the upper right-hand corner to master these specific entry techniques that we use in our trade room. All right, S&P looking good. Don't forget, any questions, drop those questions for me in the comment section below and I'll get them answered for you. How about some NASDAQ here? Back by popular demand. I always appreciate you guys, right? Send me your feedback. Always appreciate you guys reaching out and asking for uh, more info, less info, right? Whatever you guys need to get to become more consistently profitable, NASDAQ's been a pretty popular one. NASDAQ on our radar. What do we have here on the NQ? You'll notice once again, we have a very big move down in today's trading session, right? You've got, you know, in all reality, you could call this one two, three, four legs down. And I'll tell you right now, when I see a market go four legs down, like, like I said earlier, when you see a market go three big legs, it's usually not going much further. When a market goes four legs, you know something really substantial happened that day. And, and again, it's not to say it can't keep going lower tomorrow. It's just, it's unlikely, right? Unless, unless... You know, we get some more bad, you know, some bad news overnight. You know what I mean? There, there has to be something that changes between tonight and tomorrow morning for traders to look at this chart and go, oh, this is a bargain, right? Get me in, right? That, that not many professional traders are going to look at this price and go, oh, yeah, this is the price I was hoping to get short at. Let's do this, right? It, it's just not, that's not how the markets work. So it, something has to change, right? We got to get some news overnight. We got to get some, you know, something's got to happen that really changes the market's personality or the opinion of value, as they say, right, for tomorrow. So I'm anticipating a range. I'm anticipating a reversal. I'm anticipating something, right? I'm waiting now, right, for more uh, information. So I've got what I think is going to be like the range. This range may not be exact uh, for tomorrow. The S&P was a little bit easier to kind of pin down the range. If I had to guess, though, I would guess it's probably going to be your trading range. So not a lot is different here, right, on this on this NASDAQ, you get a weekend gap, right? That will act as a magnet. And by the way, what is a weekend gap? A weekend gap is last Friday's close. If you go back to last Friday's price action, right? There is a little tiny gap back there. Anytime there's a gap between Friday's close and su you know, Sunday evening is technically when the markets open up, Friday's close into Sunday evening, anytime there's a gap there, Okay, that gap will act like a magnet the entire week, right? And you can see it does, right? It acts like a magnet all week. Now, there isn't going to be a gap every weekend, all right? If there is, it acts like a magnet. You can see, right? It acts kind of like a magnet. So if we do get that reversal, yeah, that weekend gap is an easy, easy target. And I'll tell you, once you start to follow these closing prices from Friday to Friday, you'll begin to realize a lot of times the markets will open, go lower or higher, and they'll come all the way back to those Friday closes, right? So do not be surprised whatsoever if by tomorrow afternoon, this market is right around this area again. It's just it's just the way the markets work whenever there's a big kind of freak out at the, at the beginning of this week, right? Okay. So we know we're bearish. We know we're three legs down. I would love to get short on a pullback. But here's my problem. In order to get a deep enough pullback to incentivize traders to get in, 
right? Remember, you got to put yourself in the shoes of professionals. Professionals have been doing this for a long time, right? There, you know, some some divergence signal isn't going to trick them into selling down here, right? Again, unless something unless something happens, right? Some news comes out, something happens, right? Professional traders, the people who who actually move these markets around for us, they're not going to you know they're not going to let their emotions just you know drag them into the market down here. They're going to wait for those big pops. They're going to wait for those big pops because they know that's where they can start. Well, that's where they can rope in some of the inexperienced traders, right? You know, when I was a new trader, I wasn't trading on a 5,000 tick chart, right? I was on a 233 tick chart, right? Where any pullback looked like a reversal. I know I'm not the only person that made that mistake, right? I'll give you a heads up. You should not be trading the NASDAQ or really, really any market on a 144 or a 233 tick chart, right? It's just, it's too fast. Any pullback looks like the market has reversed. So if we can get a nice deep pullback up into some resistance areas overhead, right? Remember, we want to get that deep pullback. So we want to get this thing up off these lows to give sellers a reason to put money back in the market again. At the same time, though, when the market really pops off the lows like this, you know that buyers are going to see that weekend gap. They're going to see that push up and they're going to give it a couple swings, right? That's why I like whenever we see these big moves down like this, I like to wait for those deep, deep pullbacks because they give me a nice ability to trap in these counter trend buyers. Once I can get buyers roped in there, again, I like to draw a trend line off the lows, up around these highs, uh, 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 a trap high up here would be even better, right? But the bottom line is I wanna see these buyers try a couple times. Once they get in there, now I know their stops are sitting right below that low. And once you get a nice juicy red candle here, all the buyers who we assume are the less experienced traders in the market, they're probably gonna freak out. Right? They're, gonna, they're, gonna, they're gonna get out of their, their long positions. Do you have to sell your way out of those positions to get out of them? Combine that with bears coming in and getting short, right? So you got sellers selling, you got buyers trapped, they've gotta become sellers, and the market will oftentimes collapse right back down to that low. Now again, if all we get is that shallow pullback, my concern is risk reward ratio, right? My concern is not momentum at this point, but you know, I almost want to have that problem of momentum because it gives me that nice big profit. If all I get is a small pullback, you got to be thinking traps, right? Traps are your go-to whenever, again, whenever you don't want to get caught selling too close to support. For all I know, the low could be right there, right? So, I, you know, again, if I'm going to take some risk, I want to make sure I get a good reward on this side for it too. And that will increase your odds of success. And again, I'm not talking about stops and targets here. I'm talking about how much do I have to risk and what is the potential reward, right? If you filter your trades based on what's, you know, can I risk small to earn large, you'll find yourself in a lot more winning trades. And I talk a lot about that in the free course I mentioned earlier. So short pullback, right? Shallow pullback traps, deep pullback failure. If the market gets up, if they can hold that pullback now and they can jump going higher, right? What does that give us? That gives us a one, two, three reversal pattern. We know where those buyers want to go. One of my favorite entries on these one, two, three reversals is to mark up that high there, mark up the low of that channel, look for a little swing low, right? Little swing low right there and grab that trap off the low, trap into failure, into pullback, right? So trap low, seller failure, bullish pullback. Again, I won't go into, into, into all the tiny, tiny details in this video, right? Or else we'll be here all evening. But I cover all those smaller details of what traps look like, what failures look like, the, the basic rules to follow for them. I show you lots of examples of those patterns, right? So you can see more examples of them, right? In that free course that's linked up there, right? In the upper right-hand corner, right? So weekend gap is a nice big magnet. If they keep the party going, then obviously a retest of that high at 54 and a quarter is definitely on our radar. As we go lower, very similar to the S&P, we've got that, that big, well, as you can see here, we actually have multiple levels of support down here. We've got a level here, right, just above that, above that major low, and you got 27 and a quarter, right? 27 and a quarter goes all, I won't, I won't waste your time on that, but it goes all the way back, 
right? It goes all, I mean, like, I can't recall the exact date on it, but a, we, we have, let's put it this way, a lot of bottoms, right, in this, in this area. And I don't want to sell into that bottom. I also don't want to just, just try to pick the bottom either because picking the bottom, you end up getting a handful of you-know-what, right? Not a very reliable strategy. So what I want to do is, is as the market goes lower, that will complete what, what I think is, is probably a triple, a triple measured move here. It, it does look very symmetrical. One leg there, one leg there. It would make sense to go a little bit lower here, right? Take out those lows. It just will make sense. And I honestly hope they do because if we get that, if we can get that run lower, right? If I can get them to take out these lows now, now that moving average comes over, I can look for that one try, two try trap low, right? Remember that oftentimes will spike higher I can then mark that high, mark that low, and then grab that first pullback off the low, right? These are really, really great setups. A crown reversal pattern into a, what's basically a one, two, three reversal off that low into a, right, bear trap, uh, failure pattern, right? Pullback setup, right? As we come off the low of that channel. We'll talk more details of the specific entry techniques, right, tomorrow morning in the trade room and, of course, in our video classes. So that's a general idea as we, right, as we go lower here. If they can hold it, if they can hold it, there's actually quite a bit of nice space below us. You'll notice we got levels at 91 and a quarter, right, 217. So there's plenty of space below us here. Uh, if the market can take out these lows, if they can hold this pullback, right, and jump off the moving average, uh, again, I'm not going to try to, I'm, I'm not going to sell that first pullback. That would be, well, it might work, but it's not a very high probability setup, right? We want to try to get ourselves into highly probable opportunities because of the law of large numbers, right? If you're a basketball player taking high percentage shots, uh, or if, you know, if you're a baseball player, right, swinging at high percentage pitches, or you're a poker player, right, going all in on high percentage hands at poker, whatever the whatever the you know the uh, the the probability game you're you're playing is, but we want to try to constantly put ourselves in high probability situations, and we see good trades, we go big. Right, this is this is not a great spot to be getting in. You're more than welcome to try to do it, right? I mean, you know, you'll you will see them. You know, they'll they'll, they'll be successful. Markets have to break out eventually, right? They're just not difficult to get consistent results from. So once we get that one, two, three move down, I can then mark that low. I can mark that high now, and now I've got momentum. We've got proof. They're breaking to that low, and now I know exactly where I want to get short up around these highs. All right. Now remember, I'm not really drawing this to scale. It could be a little bit, right? It could be a little shallower. You know, we go up, uh, pull back, and we jump, right? It might be, it might be a little bit shallower there. But the idea is very simple, right? Very, very, very similar. It's all the same, right? I want to see one take out that low, two pull back to the moving average, and three show me you mean it, right? Show me you mean it. Once I get that one, two, three, I want that first test off the high of that channel, right? Maybe it's a Maybe it's a buyer failure pattern, a pullback pattern, right? A trap pattern, right? As we go off of the high of that channel. Again, pardon my squigglies right now. You'll get a lot more details in the free trading class, as I mentioned before. Now, also, too, we may see it, right? Make a run lower and then unable to hold that pullback and one, two, trap up. Every once in a while, we'll get something like this where it'll it'll, it'll kind of grind higher, right? And I can draw a trend line there, trend line there, right? And I'll grab it off of that one. It's the same basic idea, right? You're letting the bears try twice. You're using some sort of trap entry, right? Off a channel low, you know what I mean? You're, you're really giving yourself a fighting chance going against that trend right there. So, you know, the idea is pretty simple. You know, it's pretty, pretty, pretty basic. You want to give the bears at least two tries here because you know human nature is try twice right market you know market goes down bears try once bears try twice it's human nature to try things twice and the markets of course are no different so that's why i like to look for those two tries and then back up right go in the opposite direction so nasdaq i think we're, we're pretty straightforward again like the s p there's not a lot of difference 
if the market goes sideways here. We're still looking for the same thing. Just be aware of that trading range. Stay out of the middle, right? Buy low at support, sell high at resistance, and we'll use the same patterns, uh, whether it's a range bound market or not for tomorrow. All right, we're looking good. So NASDAQ, we got you covered, baby. How about some gold? Let's wrap things up. Let's wrap things up on my favorite precious metal, right? The gold, the gold futures. I'm sure it's probably your favorite as well. Uh, let's see here. Over on the gold, what do we have? Something different? Yeah, nope. It's pretty much the same thing here on the gold. Uh, very similar, right? Not the same. I actually really like this gold chart right now because you'll notice we get some pendulum swings. We get some expanding triangles. So we get that big move down, right? One leg, two leg, three leg. Again, anytime we see a mark go three relatively big legs, uh, we know it's probably not going that much further. It definitely could go further, right? It just is unlikely if it does want to go, right? That's probably your fourth leg right there. So shouldn't expect too much more unless, of course, right, again, unless, of course, something changes uh, overnight. I've got a major, major level of support back here at 17 59, right? 1759 is that major bottom, right? That is a major, major level of support. So very similar to the E-mini S&P and the NASDAQ here. We've got major support down below us. Uh, and of course, you'll notice I've got Friday's close right there above us. So interesting, interesting. I, I called it Friday's close because you'll notice there really wasn't much of a gap right? There really wasn't much of a gap there. Uh, maybe there was, but it was very, very subtle. So uh, not as much of a magnet, but you can see what happens though, right? They come, they come back to those areas all the time. So I wanted to put that on there so you're going to know where it is because that will be, you know, it'll, it'll be a magnet, but more importantly, it'll be a place where traders will be looking to trade off of uh, here tomorrow. Most important thing right now is, is this range, right? Most important thing is the range. Whenever we see a range market, my job is to find resistance areas above the range, resistance areas above the range, and sell at those resistance areas above the range. Whenever I see a range market, my job is to find support levels below the range, support levels, support levels, right, and buy below the range, right? We buy low at support. About, you know, uh, 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 below the range, we sell high at resistance above the range. And of course, the range is a magnet, so we stay out of the middle. Okay, that's the basic idea of our plan for tomorrow. Uh, if the market does have a breakout, we'll trade the breakout, but we're not going to try to predict the breakout, right? That's a fool's game. So, well, my, my goal right now is I'd like to get us up around these highs. I have a pendulum swing. The amount of the move below the range is equal to the amount of the move above the range right? Usually it is. I've got that as resistance. I've got my expanding triangle resistance, my favorite type of resistance are expanding triangles. And then if you look closely here, yeah, we've got a little bit of a, what I would call a reversal line, right? It's a, it's a prior bottom that now can be used as resistance, right? So we got, we got, we got the we got a little bit of action up there around that 17, you know, 84. And at the same time, it's also last Friday's closing price. So I'd love to see this market go higher here, but here's the deal, right? Here's the deal. Now, I don't want to go into too much detail on this, but whenever I see a market go above a range, and I want to sell up here, right? But look below the range. If we come off below the range, all right, this is where I always remind you guys, there's a very big, important difference between these two charts, right? This one is a strong bear move down. I can get pretty aggressive, right? Selling into buyer's stop loss with a failure pattern, that first example. If the market runs lower and we end up below the range, then we come back up in, now you've got a lot more momentum on the chart right? You're going to have buyers now thinking this thing has reversed because it's a one, two, three. It hasn't really reversed yet, right? Because the one, two, three happened inside the range, but you're going to see a lot of people put their channels on, right? And they're going to try pretty hard. They're going to put up a fight uh, to, buy, to buy that pullback. And to make sure you don't get sucked into that fight, right? And, and lose a few teeth, you want to look for two tries and then back down. 
So it's a very it's a very subtle but a very important difference here. We're still trying to sell at resistance above the range. We're still using the buyer's stop losses to fuel the move back down. We just give the buyers a little bit more of a benefit of a doubt, right? We give them a little bit more wiggle room whenever we rotate right off the low. And that's what we call it, right? We call it we call it rotation off the low. So if the market was to go down and then back up, right? Or if it was just a simple start to cruise higher here my concern is not location because location looks great my my concern is momentum right momentum so as we go higher here i want to give those buyers the benefit of the doubt right let them try once let them try twice my, my again my favorite way to do this is is draw a trend line there off those highs right grab that short off the high of that channel if it wants to go trap high even better right even even better that would be a great spot to look for it so again the key is is we're trying to combine resistance with a failure pattern with this particular type of failure pattern because of that momentum coming off right of those lows and then again if all we get is a shallow pullback you know for example if we go up into this trend line Sometimes what will happen is, is the market will go up, it'll pull back so quickly and go like that and go right back in. When you see stuff like that, there's a big opportunity right there for that trap, right, off of, off of that high, right? So if you see it go up, again, I'm not going to sell the first one, right, but I will wait for those buyers to try twice and then hit it on that trap. It, it goes back to the same idea from earlier in the video where I said if it's a shallow pullback, you want a trap uh, just because you're, you're concerned about risk-reward ratio, right? And again, I'm not talking about stops and targets here. I'm talking about can I risk small to earn large, right? That's, the, that's what I'm talking about. That's the challenge I'm talking about, all right? So that was very similar, but again, very important. And then if we can get the market to pop, if the buyers can hold, then we've got that jump off the moving average, right? There's that one, two, three. Now, again, I don't want to get those emails tomorrow saying, I tried to buy it, man. You said, you said one, two, three. The problem is this is not a reversal yet, right? It didn't work here. It didn't work here. It didn't work here. Strong pops, right? Strong pops are not, are not enough. They're not enough. They just aren't, right? Again, if you want consistency in your trading results, you're going to want to wait for that actual breakout right you know the old saying right trade what you see not what you think yeah we don't want to trade we think the market might reverse but you know i'll tell you it's not fun to watch go without you but it's also well let's put it this way i'd rather i'd rather watch that market crank higher and wish i was in than try to get in right and wish and, you know and wish i was out right i'd rather be on the uh, on the other side of that coin so wait for that one two three breakout mark that high and again watch out for that move up shallow pullback higher high watch out for those little traps right those traps are really really common around those hidden channels right trap low uh failure pattern pullback pattern right and then as you go higher we don't want to buy high, so we buy traps, right? So again, trap low. And, and guys, oftentimes, sometimes, not every time, uh, we don't get that trap low. You know, there'll be times where you don't get below a prior swing. If you don't get the trap, folks in the failure, right? Moving average comes over. It's a, it's a seller failure pattern. It's a pullback. It's a trap low. All right. And again, I, I, I apologize. I can't go into all the details right now, but I'm going to cover all those details in that free course. Right. Grab the little, little information icon there uh, in the in the upper right hand corner. All right. So now we know. And again, we know that if the buyers take control here, yeah, they're going to probably be hunting for those highs. 1800 seems to be a pretty a pretty logical spot there. Right. For a magnet for that. Right. For that bull move higher. And then as we as we go lower, I've got major support down here at 1759. So as we go lower here again, I will definitely be looking for those crown reversals, those ones, those twos, those traps, and those goes, right? Buying that trap low. I know it takes some guts up to, to, to buy that price going lower. I know it's very tempting to want to chase after it as it goes higher, but I'm telling you, you don't want to chase these things, right? Buy low at support. Don't chase it. Buy it on the first pullback, 
right? Either, either, you know, either, either strap in and grab that and grab that crown reversal, or you know, like I tell my clients, if you don't feel confident on the crown reversal, right, just wait for the reversal up and just buy the first pullback. Or maybe you want to go, I'll buy one contract here and I'll go full size position over here. Right? There's, there's ways of managing your your you know your fear of, of doing these things. And I'll, I'll be here tomorrow, obviously, in the trade room uh, to make sure you guys are doing the right way. So crime reversal into hidden channel pullback. You got to think, too, on this one. If the market does go low, we get that reversal. Pendulum swing, right? So just like I did over here, you can measure the amount below, measure the amount above, and that's going to give you your kind of big run target right for tomorrow the the most reliable targets always going to be back to the other side of that range up here right but leave that runner if you got it right if you got it leave the runner especially on a friday right things get crazy on friday afternoon so if you can leave that runner great spot to do it okay then of course if we do go lower and we hold that pullback here right that will tell you now one two three break down again low probability trade selling that pullback but much higher probability trade right selling off the first test of the high of that channel where are we going next big leg down look at that open space down there open space very desirable but we got to get that breakout got to get that one two three move mark that low mark that high and we're selling right maybe we're selling traps right maybe it's a maybe it's a trap above that high maybe it's a a failure up around that high right we'll know more once we get there uh tomorrow morning all right guys so again stay out of the middle Stay out of the middle, stay away from that middle, wait to get up, right? Shallow pullback trap, deep pullback failure, one, two, three reversal, right? Or that move lower, crown reversal, right? I won't I won't keep beating that drum anymore here. We got a plan ready to go for tomorrow. Speaking of tomorrow, boy, tomorrow is a Friday. It'll be before you know it. I would love to have you there with us every morning at eight o'clock Eastern time. We open up our trade room Monday through Friday. What I'll do is I'll put I'll put a link for you guys to come out and join us every morning as a member. I'll put that link you guys need in the description of this YouTube video. I'll also put a big button for you below this video tonight on the trading blog. So grab that button and right grab grab your grab your advanced membership and I'll see you tomorrow morning and every morning in the trade room. Don't be afraid to call the office. I've been more than happy to walk you through the entire sign-up process and install all the indicators, get the cheat sheets ready. That way you're ready for trading right in the trade room here at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Don't forget, we got live chat on the left, live chat on the right. And at this point now, as you guys know, you can drop those questions if you got them in the comment section below. And I hope by now I've, I've earned at least a, a thumbs up or a like button here. And hopefully uh, you guys subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss our next video newsletter. But that's it for me tonight, guys. Thank you so much. I apologize once again to leave you hanging in last night's newsletter. I would have much rather been here with you yesterday. Trust me on that. Hopefully you guys had a great day yesterday, a great day today. One more day tomorrow. Hopefully I'll see you there right there with us. That's it for me now, guys. As always, my name is Joseph. Be well out there. Be nice to each other, will you? And be here next time. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.